గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు శరచంద్ర ఐఏఎస్ అకాడమీ డైలీ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ ఫర్ ద డేట్ ఆఫ్ థర్టీ ఏప్రిల్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ టూ సో టుడే ద మెయిన్ టాపిక్స్ ఆర్ మలేరియా ఫీ ట్రా టార్గెట్ సెట్ బై స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ కర్ణాటక అండ్ వీ ఆల్సో రీడ్ ద సెకండ్ టాపిక్ అబౌట్ ద హీట్ వేవ్స్ అండ్ థర్డ్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ హెపటైటిస్ బి ఫోర్త్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ సెక్షన్ వన్ ఫార్టీ ఫోర్ ఆఫ్ సిఆర్పిసి and fifth topic is about india's post payment bank okay so coming to the first topic of the day malaria free target has been set by karnataka so this news is uh, related to the malaria disease of malaria so where the karnataka has set a target to make it to make itself free of malaria by 20 27 okay so karnataka has set a name for eliminating the malaria by 2027 and you must observe that india that means india india the total uni- union government the central government has set a target for 2030 to make india malaria free country okay so union government set a target to make india malaria free country by 2030 whereas Karnataka government wants to be 3 years 3 years ahead of the target set by the central government recently if you know that Karnataka won the national recognition and admiration for its efforts to eliminate the malaria over the last 6 years okay so as a part of NFMEI program that is national framework for malaria elimination in India Karnataka is did a commendable job by reducing good number of malaria cases okay so being reported every year from 2015 to 2021 so that is how the karnataka state has been appreciated for the efforts to reduce the malaria cases so coming to what is this malaria see malaria is caused by a parasite which is spread by female anaphylis mosquito so basically a mosquito bite will introduce the malaria causing parasite into the human body okay so the mosquito bite will introduce the parasite into the human body so after entering the human body this parasite will undergo the stages of its few more stages few stages were undergone in the mosquito few more stages were undergone in the human body and finally it affects the human body so if you see the uh, stages here if you see these are the stages of parasite in the body of mosquito where these are the stages of parasite in the body of human so they will gametes will become okinate okay so then they become sporozoids so sporozoids are injected by beating so when the mosquito bit has then sporozoids will get injected sporozoids will penetrate into liver cells okay their liver stage then they from the liver they enter into the blood blood stage so they also affect the gametocytes so this is the stages in the both mosquito body as well as the human body this is how the parasite will grow in mosquito body and also grow in the human body and finally affects our health so malaria is not uh, malaria is very common disease throughout the world if you see in africa particularly half of all the deaths each year are like in nigeria congo tanzania mozambique niger burkina faso so there are many countries in africa who who have been greatly affected by the disease of malaria okay so like over 4 lakhs people each year were affected or were killed by malaria according to the world health organization figures so malaria mostly affect the children below 5 below 5 why because the immunity of the children up to the age of 5 is very less so that's the reason why the effect on the children is very high okay so almost 67 percent of all malaria deaths worldwide in 2019 are children okay 67 percent of malaria deaths are children so it is very tragic news to be listened so in india 
5.6 million cases were reported in 2019 when compared to 20 million in 2020 this is of course a very good uh, welcome achievement by the indian government through its uh, complete uh, malaria elimination program okay so in order uh, so we have almost we could reduce from 20 million cases in 2020 to 5.6 means almost 75 percent reduction we can see so we can be attributed the credit can be attributed to the national favor for malaria elimination in india program okay so malaria free certification is given by world health organization if suppose india wants to receive the malaria free certification from who then the following conditions have to be met okay the following con the conditions are like uh, the chain of indigenous malaria transmission is discontinued first of all the chain of indigenous malaria transmission has to be discontinued and a country must also show that it can stop the it can stop from further restarting then uh, the committee that is uh, malaria elimination certificate panel is there so this will study the health health related developments in a country and finally decide whether to give the malaria free certification to a country or not so uh, india set itself as 2030 sorry set itself 2030 as a target to get this malaria free certification by eliminating malaria from india whereas karnataka was trying to gain the certification before 2027 itself right so what are the major findings because from the who world malaria report of 2020 are india is doing a significant progress progress very very good in comparison 2018 as i already said you so the 2019 there was a reduction 2020 still there was more reduction okay so year by year the number of malaria cases are being decreased in india and yeah so why can't why can't we produce malaria vaccine uh, why the malaria vaccine uh, is not yet to be produced why the, the reasons are first thing the parasite is very complicated as i said the malaria causing parasite is very complicated as i already explained you some portion of it some lifespan of it is spent in human other half of the lifespan is spent in mosquito so first half first half in malaria mosquito second half in human body and at the same time this parasite will hide itself from our immune system okay to avoid being identified these parasites hides inside the human cells that means the you in human immune system cannot identify the entry of parasite malaria parasite in the human body okay till it is completely like matured grown and matured by using the human body it is not being recognized at the stage of sporozoites okay so if you see the figure so yeah here the stage of sporozoite is there so if at the stage of sporozoite if human body recognizes the entry of the parasites then it is easy to kill the sporozoites but it is not recognized because they will hide from the human immune system they will grow stronger and enter into the blood cells only after become the gametocytes which can affect the health right so at that point of time it becomes difficult for the immune system to fight with these parasites so and at the same time lack of funding and lack of interest also were acting as hindrances to find the malaria vaccines and vaccine manufacturers also have very little incentive to produce the malaria vaccines so as far as possible in order to con in order to contain the malaria in order to uh, avoid the malaria cases reduce the malaria cases so a multi prong approach has to be there from both government and cooperation with the public cooperation with the public societies or whatever the societies health related departments so it is a multi prong approach has to be given to the uh, particularly you have to identify the uh, zones where the malaria is more prevalent and you have to take all steps in order to avoid the uh, growth of mosquitoes in order to avoid the and uh, proper hygiene has to be maintained in order to avoid the mosquito entry and all okay so such uh, re uh, solutions may yield very good reasons right next coming to the about heat wave so if you see the heat wave if you see the heat waves 
in india right now we are experiencing the heat waves so if you see this figure produced I mean, this figure is given by indian meteorological department uh, so if you see the figure you can see the how the india is not only india the subcontinent area is getting heated and how it is affected because of these heat waves okay so if you see what is we'll see what we'll discuss what are these heat waves how to avoid them what are the causes for the heat waves and uh, what are the remedies to avoid the heat waves so in the <coughs> maharashtra's vidarbha and marathwada regions are experiencing the heat waves right now okay almost in the last two months for the four times it experienced the heat waves and on april 26 vidarbha was the warmest region in the country warmest region in the country okay so coming to what is this heat wave and all if suppose a heat wave is declared when the hottest temperature of the region rises to at least 40 in the normal areas and 30 in the hilly areas okay in the plain areas it is 40 whereas hilly areas the 30 degree generally hilly areas have less temperature less temperature average temperatures than the plain areas because of the temperature uh, inversion as we go up in the stratosphere the temperature decreases that is the reason why sorry as we go up in the as we go up right uh, in the atmosphere the temperature decreases so as the temp- that's the reason why hilly regions will have less temperature that's the reason why the target the upper limit for hilly regions is also the only 30 degrees to in order to declare it as a heat wave whereas in plain areas it is 40 degrees in order to declare it as a heat wave so the heat wave is defined by the imd indian meteorological department as if there is temperature difference of 4.5 to 6 degrees celsius of average of that period then it is regarded as the heat wave i'll explain about this point and uh, we'll see this severe heat wave this is normal heat wave what is severe heat wave when the maximum temperature required in an area depends from the normal by 6.4 okay then, uh, now i'll explain you about this for example for example in summer your area is going to uh, your area will experience uh, 38 degrees I- imagine that your ex- average temperature of your area in summer okay the maximum temperature of your area in summer reaches to 38 imagine that this is your average for se- example in any partic- on any particular day if the temperature reaches more than 38 plus 4.5 it is 42.5 if it is 42.5 to 44 that is 38 plus 6 4.5 to 6 right so 38 plus 4.5 38 plus 6 so if the temperature rises to 42.5 and it, it may somewhere between 42.5 to 44 then it is said that heat wave has affected this area there is heat wave in this area if it is more than 44.4 that is if it is more than 44.4 that is if the difference is more than 6.4 degrees celsius then it is known as severe heat wave okay so in addition imd declares that the heat wave or severe heat wave when temperature reaches 45 or 47 on any particular day so irrespective of this lower limit if the temperature reaches 45 then it is regarded as a heat wave in the uh, heat wave or if it reaches to 47 degrees then it is regarded as a severe heat wave irrespective of its base temperature so okay if there is change of 4.5 to 6 degrees with the base temperature then also it is called as heat wave or if it is the temperature is more than 45 then it is heat wave if the temperature change is 6.4 with the base temperature then it is called severe heat wave or else if it is 47 then also it is called as severe heat wave so what are the reasons particularly about this maharashtra now Ma- why maharashtra is experiencing the uh, heat waves because the lack of pre monsoonal rainfall generally some part of rainfall is uh, experienced by the maharashtra before the onset of monsoon okay so as the 63% of rainfall shortfall okay rainfall shortfall, shortfall in the rains okay 63% shortfall was there in uh, rains received by the maharashtra from 1st march to the april 26 so that's the reason that's that that is the immediate reason we can say uh, for receiving of more number of heat waves by maharashtra these days 
so why india in general is experiencing more heat waves yes first is the concrete jungles which we call as cities or towns so and lack of the tree cover have intensified the effect of heat waves generally we experience 3 to 4 degrees more temperature we experience we feel the 3 to 4 degrees more temperature in a town in a city because of the because of the urban heat islands because of the temperature because of the pollution because of the concrete buildings because of lack of tree cover we experience we feel 3 to 4 degrees more than the temperature on the ground okay so more heat waves were predicted since the global temperature is rising so the concept went to global warming again so on an average 0.8 degree celsius has been raised in the last 100 years night time temperature is also rising so daily peak temperatures were becoming very high day by day the problem is becoming intensified so the climate change all around the world is also responsible for these heat waves so high intensity ultraviolet rays are coming so due to the mix of all these heat stress predominantly the rural population so all means india indian rural population is vulnerable to these heat waves heat waves will also affect the cropping yields okay the yield of the crop may decrease because of the heat waves cropping pattern has to be changed so it is all the part of like uh, adaptation okay climate change adaptation so the concept of adaptation towards climate change arose again once again because of these heat waves so as the global warming occurs the temperatures are in rise more number of heat waves are being experienced which decreases the crop yields as well causing the food security problems so we have to be more careful so how india deals with the future heat waves what can we do we have to identify the heat hot spots and we have to encourage the for policies local action policies either by decreasing the concrete jungles or increasing the tree cover okay or whatever the possible solution over there so case by case is cluster by cluster village by village okay we have to identify the hot spots and we must be aware and we must make people aware of the health standards of the whatever the labor legislation uh, of about the effects of the heat waves on our health as well as crop health now uh, we we have some health standards now we have labor related legislations we have many sectoral requirements for worker safety and all in relation to climate change we have to rethink re examine all these standards legislations safety measures to include heat waves as well okay policy intervention on health water and power then traditional methods of adaptation very good traditional methods have to be adopted like staying at home not going outside dressing comfortably so these are very traditional methods shaded shading our windows so subsurface water storage tanks insulating the housing materials from light so all these mean heat so all these might be the reasons but all these are only temporary in the sense the permanent solution lies in forestation in decrease in the global warming in decrease in the heat islands in encouraging more and more number of trees plantation uh, plantation of trees in the cities as well as in the rural areas okay right next uh, coming to the core heat wave zones what are the zones almost all the state many states if you see rajasthan agarna chandigarh delhi west bengal west madhya pradesh sorry uh, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Orissa, Maharashtra, Vidarbha, Gangetic, West Bengal, so coastal Andhra, Telangana. So there are many states who have been affected by the heat wave. Okay, vulnerable to the heat wave zones, right? And next is about the section 144 of CRPC. That is section 144 of Criminal Procedure Code. So. this deals with the almost the colonial section this is the colonial section way back in the video in the british time so this uttarakhand government invoked section 144 after supreme court directed the uttarakhand government to ensure untoward situation means that is unexpected situation or unwelcome situation and inappropriate statements 
would arise during the panchayat maha panchayat so on april 27th a maha panchayat has been organized in uttarakhand in the maha panchayat inappropriate statements shall not be given and untoward situations to avoid these two supreme court allowed for the invocation of section 44 okay so section invocation of section 40 144 is in the hands of magistrate or subdivisional magistrate or any other administrative magistrate so empowered by the state government in order to use the section 144 which is a colonial era statute state uh, statute to avoid the untoward situation and improper statements so the officers who have written order could be direct any person or any group of person at a specific place or it could be issued to the entire public so generally if you have the 144 section means if you have the magistrate order a district magistrate or sub regional magistrate order or administrative magistrate order so any officer who carries this order we may ask the persons to leave the premises not to enter the public places okay it may avoid the groups assemblies and all okay by using the article sorry section 144 the magistrate issue the magistrate issues the order in case of emergencies to avoid the or to prevent the uh, violence next powers provided so magistrate can utilize this cause uh, so decision about specific item so under his control so the restrictions on movement can be placed carrying of weapons can be avoided unauthorized gatherings can be avoided okay and 144 normally considers any gathering generally three or more individuals to be prohibited so generally we think that when a section 144 is invoked then in that area three or more persons or four or more person cannot join together cannot go together cannot gather cannot assemble together okay so police can avoid such assemb- such an assembles or such a gathering okay then how much for how many days once it is invoked once it is invoked then Uh, it will extend up to two months okay extend up to two months if everyone is silent on this then after two months it will go away but if the state government wants to extend it it can extend it beyond two months but not more than six months it cannot last more than six months okay so section 144 can be used for two months in general maximum up to six months with the permission of state government that means state government can extend next what are the criticisms first of all it is unjustifiable why because the magistrate is enjoying the discretionary powers in declaring the uh, section 144 so uh, you, at the same time the first step in disputing the order for example if the order is given and dispute arises then according to the act it has uh, to file a revision application with the same officer issued it so the magistrate issues as the section 144 order now if you want to challenge the order you have to challenge before the same person which is it is the principle against the natural justice so it is against the principle of natural justice that is a person has given order and you are going to challenge the same order at the same person so how illogical is this next individuals who have been wrong claimed that the state has been repeatedly violated rights before the high court intervened so so there are several times uh, the 144 sections has been claimed wrong by the individuals now prohibit issuing the prohibitory order as a class larger area is not suitable because security situations differ from place to place okay so the implementation day to day implementation of 144 becomes complicated and it become an internal security issue okay so supreme court several times uh commented upon the our uh, section 144 so in 61 in babulal parade versus state of maharashtra supreme court refused to strike down the law so they were asking to remove the 144 section itself but supreme court refused so not true to infer that the remedy of a person aggrieved by an order under section was indivisionary next in 67 again the court rejected the challenge to rule saying no democracy can exist if the public order is freely allowed to be disturbed by the sector of people so so it says that yeah then magistrate power under one section 144 is not an ordinary power emanating from administration but the power exercised in the judicial way and capable of additional judicial examination so the court stated in 1970 so several times 
in this way court has been uh, criticizing and at the same time sometimes supporting sometimes criticizing the section 144 and on one side it is upholding the law's constitutionality constitutionality on the other side it is saying that the power exercised okay is uh, in the judicial way capable of additional judicial examination okay so reasonable restrictions okay article 92 yeah so article 192 is nothing but freedom to form assemblies associations or trade unions and cooperative societies were there under article 19 class 2 so it says that uh, and one of the restrictions is reasonable restrictions can be placed on assembly of the people so this is what reasonable 144 acts as the section 144 acts as a reasonable restriction upon article 19 class 2 Okay, what is the prerequisite for at such gathering? Generally, Hindu religious leaders have frequently made a fiery remarks against the Muslims, including one in the Haridwar in December last week. So, expecting that there may be some seditious speeches, there may be some communal speeches. So that's the reason why Supreme Court is validating Article 144, Section 144 of CRPC to be invoked in this region, Uttarakhand. regarding mahapanchayat so fifth is all about the india post payment bank news so the union cabinet has approved 820 crore financial aid package for india post so if you see it is uh, india post so india post payments bank aapka bank aapke dwar so so 1.4 lakh post offices as the payment bank branches So 1.7 lakh postmen to give the banking at your doorstep, more than 5,000 ATMs. So it is going to be going to be the world's largest bank according to the in uh, BJP government according to the Modi statements. Now IPBB, that is India Post Payment Bank. The Prime Minister established this in 2018. The main purpose of IPBB is to reach the nook and corner of the country through the banking system. That means. when banking system is reached to every corner of the india then it can be inclusive growth can be guaranteed okay this is a very welcome step towards the inclusive growth of the country so indian government is the owner of the ipbb 100% share it is having so it employs more than 5 lakh po- 4 lakh postmen in order to reach in order to serve each and every part of the country through a network of post offices right rbi will manage the ipbb ipbb okay the bank's mission is to make india's uh, a- most accessible and affordable and trusted financial institution okay so it want to remove the barriers to the last mile of the unbanked and underbanked okay so post office is readily available in many parts of the country where banks are not available so that's the reason why this indian payments po- post payment bank will serve for the inclusive growth of very remote areas as well so it want to develop the cashless economy and it wants to support the india's digital india initiative so encouraging the indian post payment bank is the need of the day why right? because it is trying for inclusive growth and a holistic growth of the country okay so this is all for today thank you we'll see you tomorrow